Hey dudes, this is Cynthia Levin, and I guess I'm supposed to say I'm not famous yet, and I am a comedian, a non-famous comedian. And you're listening to Tommy Throwback Kovac on Splat from the past. Tommy's a naughty little fuck, but he is awesome. Cheers, everybody. Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming back my good friend, the hilarious comedian Tammy Pescatelli. She's coming on the show today to talk about um, her most recent uh, comedy special. It's called Way After School Special. And uh, she's got a romantic comedy movie out, which I wasn't aware of, because in this day and age, you you, you hear about very few movies coming out. Um, It's called That's Amore, named after the Dean Martin movie. I'm having her on the show today to talk about those upcoming projects and anything else she's got going on. Uh, Tammy is a lot of fun. She's a national treasure of a lady. She really is. She's hilarious. And um, this is the third week of the coronavirus, and I'm still not losing hope. We will beat this thing. We will make it. Just got to keep your heads up. In the meantime, I am podcasting excessively. So, uh, yeah, here is my new interview with Tammy Pescatelli. I don't know what is going in on this apocalypse. I'm telling you, no electricity, nothing. I know, it's, 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 it's a real clusterfuck we're in. <laughs> I know, and like literally, my son is trying to do his homework. We're trying to get it. Everybody's, okay, great, they're on Google Classroom. Well, yeah, there, no electricity, no one's doing anything right now. I mean, granted, there's charges and things, but I also didn't sign up to be a teacher. I'm like, <laughs> this is crazy. I know. Oh, my God. I think this is going to be really good for us, though, because, you know, ever since 9-11 happened, we've been very selfish and in some cases greedy and mean-spirited. But I think this is going to make us more humbling. I hope so. I mean, that's that's the goal, isn't it? I mean, mm-hmm. I think that's – I'm hoping that people will take the time and be less – I hope also that they'll be less sensitive. Like, I can't take the – just the baloney, the – the level of sensitivity they have that you can't say anything. I'm hoping that now we go back and realize, listen, we're all one race. We're all one. Who cares what your religion is? We are all in this together, you know? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just insane, you know? And this happens right after Lent started, you know? I picked the wrong time to quit jerking off because I've been so bored. I've been, you know, podcasting and smoking weed. That's all I do all day. (laughs) Yeah. But, oh, my God, this this past uh, St. Paddy's Day was probably the first one in history where everyone drank at home. Uh, yeah, I guess if you have it. I mean, like, I'm in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, and they shut the liquor stores down weeks ago. So it's almost like prohibition here. It's the weirdest, weirdest, weirdest thing. And I'm still getting all my bills. I don't know about it. They're all sending me things saying, oh, yeah, we care about you. Stay safe, but you're all still sending bills. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, you know, I don't know what they're talking about. The governor is on, on TV saying you don't have to pay your mortgage. Well, somebody tell the mortgage company because they call. I was like, well, the governor said we don't have to pay it. Yeah. I'm working for 12 weeks. Yeah. Oh, my God. Uh, but I think it's going to we're going to make it. Everything will be good. Uh, yeah, well, I mean, that's what people say. Uh, but I literally don't have work for 12 weeks. And I didn't have a very heavy summer because I don't work in summer. So that means that I probably will have about four weeks of work in six months. So I don't know. I, I don't have that kind of finances. My husband had a stroke two years ago and all our bottom, all our extra saving grace money went out the window so my only thing that is good for me right now is that my album went out in the middle of this so maybe that'll bring in a weird way i am kind of working Mm -hmm. if that makes sense you know but i think i'm i'm like most americans right now we don't i don't know how it's gonna work out there's it's okay for right now i just can't go on this is really kind of ridiculous i also should have the choice if i want to get sick or not (laughs) but 
I get it, and I'm happy to stay home for a little bit. But I think they got to come up with something because it can't this can't just go on indefinitely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. But so, so yeah, tell me about way after school special. Well, I went to my old high school to film it two and a half years ago um, because when I was in 10th grade, my guidance counselor told me, uh, I said, I want to be an actress. And she said, you're from here. It's a small suburb outside of Cleveland. She said, no one from here has ever been on TV. If you want to be on TV, you're going to have to rob a bank. That was her, her misguidance to me. So oh. I always wanted to film my special there because I've always seen, like, you know, people go huge. And I wanted to put everybody on TV. And I also went a step further this time. And I took the kids who were in high school and interested in, uh, in entertainment and had them work alongside professionals. So it was a really cool thing. And I was going to tell the guidance counselor off, but she was dead. So whatever. <laughs> So did you name it that because you grew up in that era of watching after-school specials? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I mean, that's uh, – our parents, that was the whole point. I also – what happened for me was is that I was watching my audience, and I'm very blessed to have a, such a loyal audience, but they were showing up at my shows. They'd be like my age or a little bit older, and they'd have grown kids, and they'd show up with their kids. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'd even have their parents. And I'm like, how am I supposed to entertain three generations at the same time? Yeah. <laughs> like, you guys have showed up with three generations. So um, I decided I had to find a way to bridge the gap between all the generations. I mean, what I'm talking about is not so unique. Oh, this is how it was for us. and that, but, but I'm trying to connect all the generations in between, you know, also showing... Yeah. My generation, what the young ones have to go through, too. And, yeah. of course, the older generation just gets it off. Like, I don't let our parents, my my parents' generation off the hook, because I know they didn't care about us. Yeah. <laughs> they all loved us, but they didn't really care about us. So that's, that's pop, most of the joke. Yeah, because their parents didn't show them any love. Yeah, well, it's not even about, like, real love. It's just about, like, you know, they didn't read us a book. I always say, like, they gave us a book with a record in it and said the fairy will tell you when to turn the page. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But uh, did you have any favorite um, uh, uh, specials growing up of uh, after school specials? Oh, sure. I talked about a couple of my specials, the one with Jodie Foster where she was a drug addict, Robbie Benson. And then they used to take them and turn them into full movies. There was this one where the kid was getting picked on by a bully and he pushed the bully, and the bully hit his head mm -hmm. and on a rock, and he died. Oh. Weird Harold or something it was called. Oh, I know. Uh, ba ba bad Ronald. Bad Ronald. Yeah. That's it. That's it. <laughs> and remember Ronald's mom let him hit him in the house? Yeah. Remember that? And Dabney Coleman and, was and the Ronald's neighbor. Ronald's mom dies. She hit him in the wall. Ronald's mom dies, and they sell the house, and he's still living in the wall when a new family moves in. Yeah, Dabney Coleman lived next door. <laughs> See, you remember? Yep, I remember that one. Oh, my God. My favorite was um, Portrait of a Teenage Shoplifter. Oh, gosh, who was in that one? Uh, Maureen Teefy, uh, who was in uh, Grease 2 and Super Supergirl. Um, I, I interviewed her two years ago, and she was uh, telling me about that. She's a sweet lady. And um, it was a very hard-hitting one because... She gets caught for shoplifting, and she has to face a really bad punishment. I mean, they did not go soft on her at all. And, you know, the network, didn't, I guess, didn't want um, them to go soft. They wanted to show what can actually happen if you shoplift. Wow. Yeah. I wish I would have known um, that because I would have had her come because I had, a, had some great ideas that didn't come to fruition because originally – Mm -hmm. This special was supposed to be on a streaming service, but then my husband had the stroke, oh. and I, uh, I, but I had to say, okay, I can't do it right now. And then by the time I came back to do the special, the person who was in charge of the network was like, "Great, yeah, we want to do it with you, but we're not going to your old high school." And I was like, "I already got the whole town excited. I got these kids. How am I supposed to tell these kids? Oh boy, we're not gonna. You can't work on the special. You know what I mean? I can't do to them." what the guidance counselor did to me. 
Mm-hmm. So I had to put up the money and do it myself. And then, thank God, Larry the Cable guy came in to be a producer afterwards and oh. helped me get great distribution on it. How is Larry the Cable guy? Nobody really sees him much anymore. He loves his life because he does all those. He can do all his uh, toy story stuff. He's got enough money for a life. He goes to golf. He has fun. He spends time with his kids. He does all the cars, you know, mm-hmm. all that stuff, and just has a good old time. Uh, I think, um, yeah, political correctness kind of um, probably probably wanted him to like you know take a back seat for a while, huh? No, I don't think so. He's got a new special coming out. He's oh, he does. Funny. He's a real comic. Oh, of course, we know that. Well, wow, that's cool though that he's got a new special coming out. Is it? Yeah. Is, is this your? Is this your first uh, special? No, it's my third. Oh, your third. Okay. Yeah, I have. A, I had a half hour on Comedy Central. That's right. Um, yeah, I had an hour that was on Netflix, and we just moved it over to Amazon Prime because once this special is done, that's going to end up on Amazon Prime. And I even had a different hour that's out, uh, but it's just only soundtrack that was released in May. Oh, nice. Mm-hmm. And I was reading, um, you had a movie out called That's Amore. I do, um, but, you know, I'm just the star of it, the producers, it's a small independent. Yeah. And the producers are kind of, they went a little bit backwards. They did a premiere, but they don't have distribution for it yet. But I assume, from what I'm understanding, is pretty soon it'll be available on iTunes and all those other platforms, too. But that was fun, because... Listen, I, I, I've i acted before, but small parts, never, mm-hmm. you know, I've never really been the lead character in a movie, and to carry a movie was a whole different experience. Yeah, it seems like the uh, the romantic comedy is being kept alive in streaming form, because a lot of, a lot of theatrical move, a lot of theatrical uh, companies are not releasing romantic comedy much these days like they used to. Um did you, did you see Ali Wong's movie, Always Be My Maybe? No, but uh, I wanted to. I, I think Ali Wong is really funny. Yeah, Ali and I came up together in San Francisco. Uh, she wasn't a very nice person back then. I don't know if it's changed or not, but I thought the movie was very, very funny, and it was well-written, I thought. Well, that's good. I mean, I love to see, I love to see comics do well, whatever they're... You know what's funny about comics is everybody has... Um, a different position on a comedian. Like, mm-hmm. we're such polarizing people. You meet one person, and they're nice, and someone else is like, oh, no, they're an idiot. You know what I mean? I yeah. remember, I'll never forget um, that case in point. My grandfather died one day. Mm-hmm. I was doing, in the middle of all the heyday of last comic, I was on my way to the Dennis Miller show. I don't know where he died. Um... I ended up continuing on to do Dennis's show, which I'll never forget. How what a great guy! Because Dennis sent someone to my house to get my clothes, so I could immediately go from the show. Sent the limo to take me to the airport. Mm-hmm. But I was I was literally devastated and trying to hold it together. I didn't want to cry on the plane because people at that time don't forget. Last Comic Stand had 18 million people watching it, so I felt like, especially flying home to Cleveland people would recognize that I was crying. Whether they recognized me or not, I didn't want to be the person who was crying on the plane. Mm-hmm. Whatever happens, I go, that, you know, that happens. Then, about four years ago, I was flying L.A. to Cleveland, and I run into a guy mm-hmm. at baggage claim, and he says, wow, he pulls my bag, and I said, oh, thank you. And he said, wow, you're a lot nicer now than you were the last time I saw you. And I said, <laughs> I, I'm, I don't... I'm not sorry, I don't remember seeing you. And he said, yeah, I was so excited because I had just seen you on Dennis Miller and I went to talk to you that night on the plane and you you weren't talk. you were just really short with me. And I said, well, I wouldn't nor- normally know any answer. I would just have to take it for your word that I was that way. I said, but let me explain to you. My grandfather had just died three hours before that and I was trying not to cry in public. And he's like, oh, my God, I'm sorry. And I go, yeah, so all this time you've walked around telling everybody that I was a witch, you know, and here yeah. I was just trying to not cry. 
I said, so try to remember all the people you told that to and go back. <laughs> but, of course, <laughs> I was just joking by then because she's not going to be able to remember. Yeah. Yeah, some pe- yes, I mean, everyone has different experiences with people, you know, especially in comedy. And all you can do is really base it, you know, based on your interaction with them. That's it. That's it. That's, you know, I mean, that's life in general, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I also another another guest of mine is in that Amore, Mark Tierno. Yeah, I don't I I don't know who Mark plays. Who does Mark play, Tommy? He plays Jake. Oh, he plays the son. I don't know if he's the son. I haven't seen the movie yet, but he's a kid, though, right? Oh no, no, he's um, in his probably early sixties by now, late fifties, early sixties, or something. Yeah, he was in. Jake, Jake is a kid. I don't know. <laughs> oh, well, it'll be interesting to figure that out. Yeah, he was in George Romero's Day of the Dead. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've been. That's in, very cool. I've been reviewed that. I'm having a hard time because I'm a huge um, Walking Dead fan. Yeah. And I found it hard to watch it last night because I already have so much anxiety. Mm-hmm. Not that I believe in it, that it's going to be zombie apocalypse, but I'm like. I just don't need any more anxiety adding to anything right now, you know? Like, yeah. I, I want only happy, I don't want only happy shows right now. Yeah, nobody needs more anxiety. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. So are all your gigs canceled for now? Everything. I don't have any work until the first sign of work I have is in June. Oh, my God. What you ought to do is, you know, make videos online and monetize them. Yeah, I know, but that sounds, first of all, you have to come up with an idea to put a video on and monetize, number one. That's what my special technically is. People right. like, do, do, you know, do a live feed, and I just don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like taking advantage of the situation for people. Like, you know, what I do is tell jokes. I don't try to take, you know, get I just don't have it right now. I, and maybe I'm a little depressed of the situation, too. And I'll, I was having the greatest time of my career in the longest time. You know, Today Show, it's an, I got to do the Today Show. Uh, and then they had a staffer mm-hmm. who has COVID, so I'm stuck quarantined especially hard because of that. And then, you know, I was supposed to do the Tonight Show. That was canceled. I was supposed to do a show on Comedy Central, canceled. So I'm a little bummed. So I'm like everybody else. But I'll get through it. And then when I'm ready on the other side, I'll I'll come out with something. I like that attitude, Tammy. I like that attitude. So You know, I mean, like, it's, it's only human to have a little bit of... I suffer depression just like everybody else. I mean, I gave everything I had to this latest special and to the promotion of it. And when we get to, you know, when we get out of this, by then I'll be, I'll be back to normal. But for right now, I mean, and by the way, I'm sitting here trying to, I've never been home for 10 weeks straight in my life. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I, my marriage, I've never been with my husband for 10 weeks straight. (laughs) My son has never seen me for 10 weeks straight. Like it's, it's going to be an interesting uh, it's going to be an interesting state of affairs. Let's see how it works out. Mm-hmm. So really quickly, there's a game that I like to play with my guests. And what it is is it's a silly slumber party questions. And how it works is I ask you the question, you answer it, and then you ask me the question, and I answer it. Okay. The same question. Tammy, are you ticklish? Uh, yes. So, Tommy, are you ticklish? Yes, I am baby ticklish. <laughs> um, is your belly button an innie or an Uh, An innie. My belly button's an innie. Tommy, and yours? Mine is also an innie. Uh, what color are your toenails painted? Nothing right now. Tommy, what color are your toenails painted right now? Right now they're painted nothing, but last time they were, they were purple with sparkles. What would you say is your best personality trait? Um, I think my best personality trait is I'm empathetic. Oh. Tell me, what do you think your best personality trait is? Same here. My sense of empathy is the thing that just it just it, it overpowers me at every turn. 
And then my favorite question, is there a stinky smell that just makes you gag? Stinky smell that makes me gag. Well, look, before I became a mom, there were a lot of stinky smells. That make... <laughs> you know, there's a smell when you walk into a, some bars of, of beer of that rotten hops and barley. Yes. It's like a spoiled milk kind of curdle. That, yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. <laughs> and for me, um, either farts or feet. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah, feet, definitely. I guess I wasn't even thinking about feet. Yeah. <laughs> well, Tammy, I, I hope your husband's doing better, and I thank you so much for coming on today. I appreciate it, Tommy. Thanks for just letting me talk and be real, because, listen, not every minute is hilarious, but we all need to find some hilarity in our life, you know, and we'll, we'll find a way to get through it all. Mm -hmm. And I hope while everyone is quarantined, they will watch your special and your movie. I definitely will will make an attempt to. And and the special is out. Uh, the movie has not come out, so don't worry about that. Okay. Take a look at that special called "It's uh, Way After School Special," or I was part of a special um, on Showtime called "Women Funny Women of a Certain Age." That came out on Saturday, the 14th, and then my special came out on the 17th. And then we all got locked down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope everyone watches your special during this time, and I, I certainly will attempt to. And wash your hands and clean out your belly button. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tommy. Have a great day. Thanks for, the, for, for working hard and staying with me. I appreciate it. My pleasure. You're a national treasure of a lady, Tammy. Oh, you're too sweet. Thank you, Tommy. My Bye -bye. pleasure. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Tammy Pescatelli. Ain't she a sweetheart? I uh, just love Tammy. Like I said, she's a national treasure and a, a, a humble lady who is hilarious. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Add me as a friend on Facebook. Join my Tommy Kovac Comedian page on Facebook. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, there's no shame in living in the past because the present sucks. Later, dudes. <laughs>